So with an award closeout, it starts off with you get your uh, researcher does his proposal. He gets awarded, which we're all very excited about. Now it's time to go ahead and start the closeout process. So with the closeout process, the researcher prepares their progress report, and then a lot of it, the institution ensures that all you know invoices, all deliverables, everything has, has been met. Then th from there, then the progress report is submitted to that particular federal agency, whether it's NSF, NIH, the Bureau of Land Management, the um, Department of Interior, which is part of the Bureau of Land Management. Um, and then from there, you've got your progress report that's submitted. And then, then you have, in that case, you, do, you might do financial, um, final financial reports or FFRs. And then another part of that is that your institution then ensures that all funds have been drawn down appropriately. If there's any invoices that those get submitted to your, your prospective office that's responsible for it. So this is really the life cycle of an award closeout. Keeping in mind that there are some other reports that might be submitted. For example, if you have any patent reports, maybe an agency might have special reports that um, might be that might be required. But ultimately, when we talk about the closeout, it really is a partnership. It's a partnership for the central office, the department, for your PI, for your, um, for your accounting office, for your grants and contracts, and any other departments that might be involved in the closeout process. So one of the things that we want to get across today is that when you think of closeouts, it is not an isolated activity, but it is a function that may cross over many different offices. So we always don't like to think of partnerships, but ultimately for a successful closeout to happen, it's a partnership that, um, that needs to be um, fulfilled.